Hello everybody and welcome to a wonderful Pisa Presents that I've been looking forward to very much on the one, the only, the infamous Archaeopteryx. So here we go. Southern Germany of 150 million years ago, just to set the scene here folks. Now if you can picture, what is today's Germany is mostly covered by a warm water, very shallow sea. So because it's warm and shallow, you have a lot of small islands populated by various reefs with lots of corals and sponges. Now, because of this, it tended to isolate that region from the surrounding ocean and the outside environment. So it kind of protected everything that was inside and allowed these various species of flora and fauna to flourish. Various ones here. In, oh, and oh, there looks like one. Oh, and there's another one right there. Hmm. I guess they're still around there. Now, except in the water, where environmental changes caused anoxia, lack of oxygen, and salinity conditions so extreme, few creatures could live in its waters. Now, anything that died and fell into this water was quickly buried by soft muds. Now, that reduced the chances for any remaining bacteria in the water, so it was buried pretty quickly. Now, this is part of the region today. You can see the limestone there on the side. Obviously, the warm, shallow sea, yeah, that ain't there anymore. But what you can still see are the remnants of it, the limestone. Now, this view from over the top is, well, it's seen from the air, obviously, as, well, perhaps a bird would have done. Question is, maybe, what kind of bird? Well, we'll get into that. So, our story starts up again in 1861 with this guy with the utterly boss name of Christian Eric Hermann von Meyer. I mean, that sounds awesome right there. Now, he was looking at a feather fossil on two different slabs of limestone. This feather was from a particular portion of the Solmhofen community quarry, which the location is inaccessible today, so sorry folks, we cannot do a field trip. Now, he's looking at this fossil and he's like, hmm, some of these features, it looks like it's a modern bird, but then these parts over here, it doesn't look like a modern bird. So he wound up contacting the editor of a local mineralogy journal and trying to convince him that this was a very unique new fossil, a new species. Now he was pointing to similarities with a specimen nearby, one that's known as the London specimen today, and then eventually he actually did name the fossil Archaeopteryx. That particular feather was the one that he was talking about. Now there is some argument today as to whether or not that feather is still actually an Archaeopteryx or if it was from a separate species, but all the same, that was the feather that started it all. Now it, well, confused a lot of people, obviously. You got to keep in mind that this wasn't too far apart from when Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of the species. So concepts like evolution, extinction, they weren't really too well known to the average person. And for people to think of a species, a fossil species of a bird, it's, it confused a lot of folks. Now, altogether, Archaeopteryx specimens, there's 12 today with one sadly missing for roughly 30 years. They've been found with sizes ranging from that of a blue jay to a roasting chicken. We've gotten to understand it a bit better than what we did back in 1861, fortunately. Now, the name means ancient wing. It's about the size, on average, of a modern raven or a magpie. Now, the feathers, the wings, the wishbone are all characteristic of modern birds, but Unlike modern birds, it had a flat breastbone, a long and bony tail you can see on the left there in what's called the Berlin specimen, which personally is my favorite one. I just love it because it looks like it's doing a little dance, like it's doing a Kermit flail. It's got a full set of teeth and three fingers with sharp claws. So, yay! Now, this is a close-up of the Solmhofen limestone. Was Archaeopteryx ever able to see it while in flight? Well... We may really never be able to know that for sure. Now, were feathers keeping warm or were they for flight? To the left there is the aforementioned London specimen, by the way. Now, Archaeopteryx having feathers and other key features actually point to its being warm-blooded. 
you have to keep in mind that most people think that dinosaurs were warm blooded today, so that's not really too much of a stretch. Now, like today's birds as well. Now, also, too, they've been able to tell from pigments that these feathers were black, with the darker colors being towards the tips or the ends of the feathers. Like that specimen right there. So now, the arrangement and structure of these feathers and wings indicate that Archaeopteryx could fly, but it probably didn't fly like modern birds. Now, it had many skeletal and other structures akin to non-avian dinosaurs. So, in other words, the mechanics probably weren't really established yet. Because of the structure and functions of the bones, the bones would only allow for flight over short distances. So no real strenuous flying like this fellow is pictured right here going over huge vast forests probably. Now, was it a bird or a dinosaur? Now, the answer may surprise you. Overall, the consensus is, is that Archaeopteryx was actually a dinosaur. It was not the first bird because most likely it wasn't a bird. The overall, the amount of features that it has, if you could say divide things into bird and dinosaur camp features, yes, yes, dinosaurs are technically birds, but still, it's still, if you could divide these features, it has more dinosaur features than it does proper avian features. Now, it wasn't, even if it was a bird, just for argument's sake, it wouldn't even be the first bird. There are earlier birds that were found, two earlier species actually, that predate Archaeopteryx by 5 to 10 million years. Now, how do these early birds, so to speak, as a group, fit into the family tree is another thing we'll probably never really know. Archaeopteryx has often been touted around with the term missing link, which I really don't like because it's a misnomer. That's not how evolution goes. You don't go from point A to point B to point C directly as a line. You don't. There are branches. There are offshoots. Things take different amounts of time. Progress slows and speeds up. It's not a direct sequence. So you'll never really have something that goes from dinosaurs to birds with a species in between. It's a succession of species with ones that, because of the complexities of the fossil record, we're probably never going to find. So you just have to keep that in mind, really. Another thing that we're not really sure of is how Archaeopteryx went extinct. I mean, we do have a couple of ideas, of course. There it is, right there, kind of soaring away as per usual. But the key thing is, is that, well, as it became less unique and as more birds appeared around, did it perhaps get competition? Various resources were as hard, harder to come by? We're not really sure. But there is a bit on the absolutely wonderful dinosaur <laughs> That is Archaeopteryx. So thank you very much, folks, and enjoy your day now. Bye.